Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on how to build data science pipelines with OpenShift using Ceph, Kafka, and Knative. My name is Guillaume Moutier, and don't worry, I don't usually carry my sword with me. I am a technical evangelist in the data services business unit at Red Hat. I'm the former CTO of Laval University in Quebec City, Canada, and with now more than 20 years of experience in various roles in the industry. Now I'm focusing my work on data science platforms, data engineering, well, everything that relates to data all throughout its life cycle, from its gathering or ingestion, through processing, down to its archiving. But enough about me, let's talk about data. The most important thing that I want you to retain from this presentation is to embrace the cloud native way of doing things. I'm not saying here that you must run everything in the cloud, no, not at all. But architectural patterns that we have seen emerge from cloud services can completely apply anywhere, including on-prem. And this is exactly what is helping a lot for data pipelines. But first thing first, how do we define this cloud native approach? Here's my totally very opinionated shortlist of characteristics that we must aim at for a cloud native data platform. Uh, first is agility and elasticity. You know, tools and frameworks and data sets, they, they evolve constantly and very rapidly. So you must be able to act accordingly with your infrastructures. Then cloud standards. Uh, I guess it's important to avoid the, any vendor lock-in with proprietary tools and, and formats. And, and we must embrace uh, widely recognized open source protocols and, and standards. Hybrid cloud architecture. Um, you know, what you are designing in terms of architecture must run anywhere without any change or, or maybe, you know, some small configs that you can adapt, but not the architecture itself. Then automation. Uh, you must embrace the DevOps philosophy. Everything must be automated and code-based. And finally, uh, separate compute from, from storage, and, you know, so that you can take advantage of the rich computing ecosystem against the central storage. To sum it up, it's all about agility, standards, and this ability to run everywhere. Um, and, and all of that will allow us to reach our business goals, which are speed, efficiency, and adaptability. And, and I will say this last one again, as it seems to me is the most important one, adaptability. Now, let's take a look at a standard way of doing things. In this schema, I illustrated a standard data interaction where a user would produce a file that would be later on consumed by an application. What I don't like about this is the coupling that you have at different points. You know, the user who has to mount, let's say, a P drive on the computer, and same thing on the server side. The application, which relies on a very specific configuration of the application server, uh, therefore making this difficult to scale, uh, especially on demand. So that's why I really prefer this approach, using, for example, object storage, where all interactions are done in a disconnected mode. It's purely a put or a get command from whatever location where you have network communication. So this is definitely more agile. And then we can also use the bucket notification feature that is available with self object storage. What it allows us to do in this example is to send a message to a Kafka topic whenever a file is uploaded or deleted. This topic can then be consumed by an OpenShift serverless service that can scale from zero to whatever is needed to process this file. This is what I call a cloud native architecture pattern. And now let's go for a demo where we'll see this architecture pattern applied to an automated X-ray analysis pipeline. The use case in this demo is about pneumonia detection from chest X-rays using an automated data pipeline. So imagine the problem is this one. We have some X-ray images to review, uh, some from people having uh, pneumonia, or some people who have normal chest X-rays, and we want to, to automate this process. So of course we think that an AI ML model can, can help and we can use 
tools that are provided from by Open Data Hub, for example, you know, with Jupyter Notebooks and TensorFlow, and we can train a model to be able to do some inferencing on, on those images and, and determine if these uh, the, the the new images that we want to process are from people having pneumonia or not. So we have this model, but it has to scale. So we have to automate it. So now the question is, how can we analyze those images as they come in for a continuous flow of thousands of images? And if we want to retrain the model and redeploy it seamlessly at various locations simultaneously, how can we efficiently do that? And again, my answer is to use cloud native architecture and patterns with bucket notifications, with OpenShift container storage, Kafka topics with IMQ streams, and Knative eventing and serving with OpenShift serverless. So here is our demo environment. Let's say we are at an hospital and we are generating new X-ray images. Okay, what we will do is send all those images into a bucket, into a self bucket that has been instanti instantiated by OpenShift Container Storage. And this bucket has been configured to send notifications whenever a new image is coming in. Those notifications will be sent to a Kafka topic that is linked to a Knative eventing and serving function. And the container that is spawned when a new message is coming in will do a risk assessment on this new image, you know, basically using the model that we have trained to try to infer if there is a risk of pneumonia or not. In a standard production scenario, all results would be sent to a doctor. But here I have added a special step uh, because, of course, you know, not uh, all models are totally perfect. There is a certain degree of uncertainty. And this is what I'm doing here. When the model is not able to have a certainty above 80%, what the, uh, what the, the process will do is anonymize the image, okay, so that it can be further processed in a central data science lab, for example. And, and normally, again, uh, in a standard production environment, you would have a doctor, a specialist, doing a manual assessment and a classification of, uh, of this uh, image for which the model was not able to infer the, the result. It would be classified as uh, a risk of pneumonia or being normal. And this would trigger a return of the model that could be re-injected here back to our uh, hospital origin through a standard OpenShift CI CD. Okay, this second part here with the model retraining and everything, uh, we won't see it in the demo. It's not implemented because uh, training a model like this takes, it takes a certain time. But I have a way to simulate a, a new model being used to do uh, those inferences, and to uh, to uh, make the link with the scenario that we described before we can imagine that in multiple hospitals there is also the same model being used to uh, to make some uh, inferencing on the images okay and again images for which the model uh, is not uh, is not so sure about uh, the the result those images would be anonymized and sent for further processing here okay let's see that live Okay, let me walk you through the environment I have prepared. Here is my uh, OpenShift cluster, where I have a few things that, uh, that I have created for this demo. First, there is here this uh, deployment config of uh, what I call the image generator. This is a container that will, well, you know, in fact, it won't generate X-ray images. It will just copy randomly uh, source X-ray images that I have in in, uh, in a bucket. It will pick randomly some images and send them, copy them to an incoming bucket. Okay, we can see that here the image generator is deployed. There is one pod uh, running. That's the blue uh, circle here, indica indicating that uh, this deployment configuration is up and running. But 
at this moment it doesn't do anything i have a parameter here that is set now to zero uh, that that makes it you know sitting idle not sending a, any image i have here a kafka source that is called x-ray images so what this uh, container is doing is just listening to a kafka topic and waiting for some messages to to come in and we can see here that this uh, kafka source is connected is linked to this service to this serverless this k native you can see the, the the logo here the k native service that is called risk assessment so this is a full serverless uh, container, uh, serverless deployment. So meaning that right uh, now, as there is nothing to process, it's just also sitting idle. So we can see here there is no blue uh, circle around the, the container, meaning that is it is scaled down to zero. There is no instance of uh, of the risk assessment container uh, running. I have a few other things that are deployed. First is my Kafka cluster. Uh, deployed uh, through the uh, MQ streams uh, operator. So very basic here, only one instance of uh, Kafka and uh, Zookeeper. It's a uh, totally ephemeral Kafka cluster. Please don't do this at home. Uh, normally you don't want to run uh, only uh, with one instance of it, but you know, for uh, resource purposes here, it's, uh, it's enough for what we want to do. Uh, so all the notifications, from the the the, um, the self bucket uh, that will receive the image will be sent to a topic in this Kafka cluster, and this is to this cluster that we have here our Kafka source uh, subscriber that is listening to the the specific topic we want. Okay, we have also a deployment of Grafana with the uh, its own operator. That's a dashboard that will allow us to see uh, what's going on. And I have also a few helpers here. I have a small database, a very basic uh, MariaDB database, where I will record uh, the names and uh, timestamps of the images being, uh, of the images as they're coming or being processed or being anonymized. Uh, and this is what we will also display in the Grafana dashboard. And finally, I have a small image server. As you will see uh, on the dashboard, we will display directly the, the images uh, as they are coming in. So here is everything that I have deployed and we are now ready to launch the image generation. What I will do now is launch the demo. And to do that, I will patch the image generator remember the, the value that is set to zero to idle it i will make it now be one one second so that means that now a new image will be generated will be copied inside our incoming bucket every second let's launch that so i've launched the command and the image generator will be patched with this new version we can see here that it has already deployed it went very fast it has deployed the new version and now it will begin to copy every second a new image. And we can already see that something is happening here. Uh, you have noticed here that my risk assessment pod is, has now been spawned. There is something happening. So that means that we have our workflow going. The image generator is putting up new images inside our self bucket which triggers a notification to our Kafka topic. Here we have our Kafka listener that uh, retrieved the, the message and pass it to the risk assessment pod for the image to be processed. Let's have a look at what, it's, uh, an, at what it looks like now. So here is the Grafana dashboard that represents in real time what's uh, happening in, your, in our pipeline. On the top left here, we have a, a summarized uh, schema on, on this pipeline. So we can see the images are being uh, sent to an incoming bucket here. And we have the counter of the number of images that have been uploaded so far. Then as notifications are sent to a Kafka topic, 
and the risk assessment container has been launched. We have the, the number of images processed. And again, if the, the, the certainty of our model is less than 80%, then we will have another function that will anonymize those, uh, those images. Okay, so we can see that the pipeline is running. On the right side, we have the list of the last 10 uploaded images. Okay, and, and don't worry, those are totally uh, random generated names and uh, uh, birth date and uh, other personal information. Those are not real uh, pa patients here. Uh, we have also, again, the list of the last 10 uploaded images, then the last 10 processed images, and we'll see uh, right uh, in, a, in, in a few seconds uh, what is happening on those images and then the last 10 anonymized images. We have some counters on the, on the left side, the CPU and RAM usage that you can see has increased because now we have some processing to do. We have the number of risk assessment containers which have been launched so far. Uh, to be able to handle the, the, the load. Uh, again, this is something that is automati automatically scaled by OpenShift serverless. And then we have here a risk distribution. So, so far, within all the images that have been uploaded, we have the, the distribution between uh, the, the ones that have been assessed as normal or a risk of pneumonia or unsure, okay? We have here in this small graph uh, the number of images that have been processed by model version. And we'll see in a few seconds what happens when you change the model. And we have here a counter of the number of deployments of the, the risk assessment um, pods. Okay. While I will explain to you what is happening on the images, I will do two things. Uh, first is to increase the rate at which the images are sent. So far, it's only one per second. And I will also change here a parameter simulating that we will have a model V2 now that will be used to do this processing. So I will do the first patch here and then the second patch. So while my containers are being updated to uh, to reflect those changes. Let's have a look at our images. And here I have another uh, special dashboard with uh, a bigger version of the displayed images. And maybe I will wait for another one to refresh so that we can see better. Uh, it's refresh every five seconds. Okay, let's stop here. So. What happens is uh, this is a, a base image. This is the image that I have prepared beforehand. I have about 800 of those images, uh, which are X-ray, chest X-rays, with some uh, personal information that I have printed on these images. This, those are, uh, as I said, uh, random, uh, randomly generated information. When a risk assessment is made by the model, what my, uh, my processing container does is write on top of the image uh, the, the, the assessment that has been done here, a risk of pneumonia with the level at which the model uh, made this assessment. So risk 100%. So the model is pretty sure that uh, th there is a risk of pneumonia for this uh, specific X-ray image. But when the model is not sure and the risk is less than 80%, what we are doing also here, you can see that the, the personal informations that were on this uh, specific uh, X-ray have been blurred. Okay, that's kind of a simulation of what you would do when you want to anonymize images. Okay, let's go back to our main dashboard and see what happened. Um, well, lots of different things. Uh, first, the, the usage of CPU and RAM has further increased because if you remember, I increased a lot the rate at which the image are processed. Now it's 10 times per second. Okay, so here those counter are growing uh, much more faster. And we can see that the OpenShift serverless has done its magic and automatically scaled the number of uh, containers, the number of pods it needs to be able to, uh, to handle the load. Of course, we can see here that many more images 
have been uh, have been assessed okay and at the same time we can see here that now i am now using the v2 model to be able to uh, to make the risk assessment so here uh, with this model change i am simulating that following image anonymization and manual classification in the central data science lab a model has been retrained and pushed back uh, to here to our hospital so that it can be used from uh, from now on i hope you've enjoyed this presentation and the demo if you have any question please feel free to reach out you can also find the code used for the demo in my github repo don't forget to check out our websites and YouTube channel to learn more about data science and OpenShift. Thank you.